This is the Marsback Zephyr Pro, a gaming mouse with a fan inside. And in this video, I'm going to tell you if it's any good, if this fan's actually useful, and if you should get one. We're going to start with the fan. Now, my hands don't typically get sweaty. They actually never get sweaty when I'm playing games. So I never really noticed the fan in the beginning. And I was actually going to write it off as a gimmick just because I never actually felt anything blowing. But then two hours before I was getting ready to shoot this video, I went to the bathroom to take a dump washed my hands and started using the mouse and immediately felt the cold water from my hands getting dried. It was really nice actually. So that made me realize, okay, this thing actually does work. So what I ended up doing to see how effective it was, I grabbed a paper towel, put it under some water, rinsed it out, then put it over the mouse to see if the part where the fan was blowing actually even cooled anything off. And to my surprise, it did. After about five to 10 minutes, the part where the paper towel was laying over the mouse actually got pretty dry compared to the rest of the paper towel, which was over the left and right mouse button. Now, does it translate to anything when you're playing games and your hands are sweaty? Maybe, I don't know. Again, my hands don't get sweaty, so I can't really answer that. What I do know is that when my hands are wet, it cooled off pretty quickly, and I think that's worth something. So not really a gimmick here, surprisingly. Now this mouse comes in two different colors, white and black. Obviously, I have the white one, but if your hands get sweaty during gaming, I would recommend getting the black one so you don't see as much of the dirtiness over time or grease and whatnot. In terms of the shape, it seems to be inspired by the G Pro Wireless series. In fact, it looks pretty much identical in overall shape with some Razer Viper elements in the front. So not only is it a familiar shape with me, but probably to many of you too, since most mice are shaped the way the G Pro X and G Pro Wireless are. It's 131 millimeters long, 40.5 millimeters tall, and 65.7 millimeters wide. So it's pretty similar to the G Pro X in size, with the exception of being about six millimeters longer. It also does this G Pro X thing where the mouse is not technically ambidextrous, but left-handed people can use it if they really wanted to because the shape is symmetrical on both sides. And in case you're left-handed and wanted to do that, the left side buttons can be disabled through the software so you're not accidentally clicking them all the time. The mouse is RGB and you can see it all over the mouse through the bottom, through the mouse wheel and inside the mouse. And you can even see zones on the bottom, but the gradient is pretty nice. It has very smooth gradient transitions from one color to the next, so it doesn't look ugly. It looks pretty high quality. The build quality and materials used on this mouse are pretty good as well. I'm not sure if they're ABS plastics or PBT, but they feel more ABS since it has kind of like a silkier shine look to it. Either way, the plastic feels very nice and high quality. It weighs 77 grams, so it's not the heaviest mouse, but it's not the lightest mouse. This is one of the lighter mouses for a mouse shape with this kind of size. The feet on the bottom of the mouse are pretty nice. It's PTFE material and it's pretty smooth. I think it's smoother than my G Pro X, but that could be due to the fact that my G Pro X is like a year old and it's been my daily driver since day one. But regardless, this feels smoother than my G Pro X, but not by much. Button feel all around is very good, except for one button, but we'll get to that in the dislike part. The left and right mouse button are very tactile and easy to click. There's not much actuation force, but it is a little heavier to click than my G Pro X. The same goes for the side buttons, DPI switch, and scroll wheel. They all feel pretty similar in terms of actuation force, and they all feel very high quality, except for the middle mouse button. For the middle mouse button, you can click it in like pretty much every mouse, but you can't click it left and right. Now that isn't really that big of an issue, but when I tested the mouse to see if it clicked left or right, kind of like how the G Pro X clicks left, when I clicked on both sides, the scroll wheel actually moved left and right instead of clicking, so it's pretty loose. It's not stable and doesn't feel very high quality. Other than that, the rest of the buttons on the mouse feel and sound very good. One thing about the sound part though is that the left and right mouse buttons sound different from each other and the forward and back button on the side buttons also sound different from each other. I don't know if this is like a normal thing in mice or maybe I'm just noticing it now and it's happened with every other mouse, but it's worth noticing here. But anyways, take a listen. Next is the software. The software that this mouse has is actually extremely good. It kind of surprised me for how good it is from a company I've never really heard of before. We'll start with the keys tab, which lets you change the buttons to literally anything you want, rather than locking you to a specific function like many other mice. Now there are buttons on the bottom of the mouse, which lets you turn on and off your RGB and your fan if you hold the button, but those aren't configurable. Only the buttons that are visible on the top. 
Next is the performance tab, which lets you set up to seven different DPI settings, which I think is insane. Now the website says that the DPI range is anywhere from 100 to 16,000, but the software lets me set it to as low as 50. Now, it's not like anybody's gonna be using 50 DPI, especially with how high the input lag will be, but it's worth noting. You can also adjust your polling rate, Windows mouse speed, scroll wheel speed, double click speed, lift off distance or LOD, and you can set your X and Y movement to separate speeds from each other. That's pretty nice. One thing that I really like about the software is that it lets you turn off enhanced point of precision right in the software instead of having to go to the Windows settings, which I think is awesome. I think every mouse software should have this because enhanced point of precision is garbage, in my opinion. I know there are some people that use it, but I like having that predictable feel. Next, you have the lighting tab, which lets you adjust the pulse speed, brightness, and what type of lighting effects you want, with the default being called new, na, new, new? I don't know what it's called, but it's spelled N-U-U, -U, so I'm guessing it's called new. Lastly is the macros tab. Don't think macros really matter that much for a mouse with no dedicated macro keys, but it is there. Overall, the software is very good, very robust, all while being very easy to use. Other companies should take note here. Logitech. Now, when it comes to the gaming experience, overall, it's a pretty good mouse, but it's not perfect, which leads me into the dislike section of this video. Number one, the right mouse button sometimes feels weird. Sometimes it feels normal, has the predictable tactility and sound that I'm used to, and then other times it feels mushy and harder to press. I'm not sure why, but that's what I'm experiencing with this mouse. It could be just a defect with my particular unit, but I'm not sure. Issue number two is the weight. Now, 77 grams isn't really that heavy at all. It's actually really light, but I'm used to something like the G Pro X Superlight, which again is my daily driver. And that mouse is something like, I don't know, 61, 63, whatever grams. And going from that to this is a noticeable jump. But if you're used to something with like 100 grams, which is about the average weight for a mouse, then going from that to this will feel night and day. I know that's what I felt when I went from my HyperX Pulse Fire Surge, which was about 110-ish grams, to the G Pro Wireless when that came out, and that's 80 grams. And that difference in weight was nuts. It was so nice. It was like holding a feather. But those two issues combined don't even touch the third issue that I have, and that's the wire. Now, the wire isn't actually an issue. You know, it's light. It's got pretty thick cables inside of it, but overall, it's light. But the problem is... It's a wire, and having a wire is nowhere near as good as having no wires. Now, I know that comparing this to my G Pro X Superlight is not really a fair comparison, especially since the G Pro X is wireless and costs like two and a half times more, which, by the way, this Zephyr Pro is $60. I don't think I've mentioned that so far. But yeah, it's $60, two and a half times less. And for that price, it's pretty good. It's got pretty much everything you would need from a high-end gaming mouse. The sensor is very accurate. It's a Pixar PWM3389, which is one of the most well-known great sensors. It's got better software than pretty much almost any other major company that I can think of. And the fan is not a gimmick, surprisingly, as long as your hands get sweaty. If your hands get sweaty, this could probably be beneficial to you. It's just, at the end of the day, it's not for me because of that wire. But if you're the type of person who doesn't mind a wire or has a wire and is looking for a wired mouse that's really good, well, this is a great option. Average price, great specs supported by great performance, great software, and a fan that seems gimmicky at first, but at the end of the day seems pretty useful. That's all I got for you though. If I missed anything, let me know down in the comments below so I can put this in the checklist for the next mouse review that I do since now everything is going scriptless. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like it. If you really liked it, support me on Patreon maybe because I like money. Um, consider subscribing because I like my subscriber count going up. If you disliked it, well then go ahead and dislike it. I don't care. You're supporting my channel by giving it interaction. And yeah, other than that, have a great day every day. Peace.